Hello, my Archage friends. This is Arid in game name September on Thunderwing, Nui, and Public Test Server. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the cost to craft weapons, including Aranor. And finally, we're going to discover the optimal items to feed your Aranor all the way up until Epic Grade. All right, so this video represents a significant amount of my time and effort. And it may actually be longer than I want it to, but hey. Uh, I, what I really want to do is I really want to explain thoroughly my work uh, so that those who have not seen one of these types of videos in the past know how to use this stuff. So way back in Arcage 3.5, we saw the introduction of the Aranor tier uh, weapons, armor, and even jewelry. Since then, myself and many others have been putting out information to try to help you, the player, decide if you even want to engage with this system, and if you do... Uh, how much gold do you actually need? So along this way, Arcage has changed and systems have been updated, scrapped, or evolved. And 4.5 was absolutely no different. The regrading rates improved, crafting mats were reduced, the crystallization mechanic was introduced, and even the goal to attempt a regrade was lowered. The only way to make sense of all this is to do some calculations. And to do that, I prefer using a spreadsheet. So what I have here is a spreadsheet that will tell you the following things. How much it costs to craft a weapon uh, all the way from Magnificent up to Aranor. And even uh, I've included data on the Tier 1 Obsidian. It will also tell you how much it costs to regrade at each step of the way. And finally, it will tell you how much it costs to level up your Aranor weapons. So let's get into it. Okay, so this spreadsheet has eight tabs. Each tab holds various information about specific systems in Arcage. We're going to go, well, I'm going to tr try to quickly run through each tab to show you how to use it. But before I do that, what I, I need to say something about this spreadsheet. So this is uh, created to be a dynamic spreadsheet, meaning all you have to do is start out by selecting a server and a weapon type, and everything else in this, uh, this spreadsheet will auto-update based off of that input. As such, I simply cannot post this spreadsheet online and have everybody able to use it. So if you want to use this spreadsheet, you can it'll be online, uh, but you really what you need to do is you need to download a copy from Google Docs and use it locally. Uh, if you don't have a spreadsheet program on your computer, uh, you can also just re-upload the document that you download back to your Google Docs account, and then you'll have full access to change the cells. Um, and the changing of the cells is what uh, is what I would have to give you uh, editor access, so you could actually change the values of the cells. And if I give you ed everybody editor access, they can just basically you know wipe out the data, change the data, and just make it unusable for everybody. So. It is going to be download and then, you know, you'll have to figure out a way to use it. I also will recommend that you can download OpenOffice uh, from Apache for free. So, yeah, there's a free program. In fact, Apache OpenOffice is what I use to make this spreadsheet. All right, jumping right in. Uh, so the first tab is uh, tab number one, and this is called the Overview tab. What we have here is general instructions for using this spreadsheet, which I'm actually going to cover here in this video, along with some historical changes that have been made. Uh, tab two is the material cost tab. This is the only tab in which you need to update value. It is very important to keep this tab updated as the auction values of items, they fluctuate from day to day and from region to region. On this tab, there are two columns, one for the North America values and one for EU. In the future, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the Fresh Start servers uh, once they start getting um, more weapons unlocked, and that'll be several months down the road. Remember to keep the material cost tab updated uh, from time to time to make sure that you know exactly what something is going to cost to craft based on the current prices of everything in the marketplace. All right, so on to the next tab, tab number three. This is the upgrade cost tab. In this tab, what everybody's going to do is you're going to start by selecting your region and your weapon type. You can pick a one-handed metal all the way up to an instrument. Once you have selected that, the sheet will update based off of your selections, 
and the material cost to tell you what weapons are the most optimal for feeding in XP to Aranor. So in this example, I have selected the North America region and the instrument. In columns A through D, this is going to show me the data to feed in each weapon type uh, for this, this grade. And separated in each of these sections is little boxes, like if you look through 15 through 23, rows 15 through 23, this represents the data for feeding in uh, a lustrous weapon at this grade. So for this instrument on North America, if I were to feed in arcane illustrious instruments, each one would cost me 148.6 gold uh, to get it to heroic, and I would need 114 of them to take my Aaron ore from arcane to heroic at a total cost of nearly 17,000 gold. So if you continue down this list, you'll see values for Magnificent, Ethereum, Delphinod, Ionad, Old Obsidian Tier 1, and New Obsidian Tier 1, along with Jola's Shield. The goal, of course, is to determine the most cost-effective way to feed XP into my Aranor at each tier. To make this even simpler, I have included a summary box at the end of each column, which I'm calling Quick Look. So in rows 96 to 104, uh, down here, I've listed each item and I uh, looked at the most important information from these calculations. So in the case of taking your Aranor instrument from Arcane to Heroic, the cheapest option is the Tier 1, the old Tier 1 Obsidian. But unfortunately, unless you stockpile 38 of these weapons prior to 4.5 because you can no longer craft them, You'll have to go with the next best option, which is the Jola Shield. But unfortunately, Jola Shields only work for one-handed weapons and shields. So that leaves you with the third best option, which is Ethereum. And here you can see the cost in gold per XP granted is 1.25 gold per point of XP. So the total cost is going to be 8,864 gold and you're likely going to need 16.85 arcane ethereum weapons or in this case instrument to achieve that okay it's at this point i want to mention a couple things real quick uh, first you must always feed in aranor two weapons at a time i don't actually agree with that it doesn't matter what i agree with that's just the way it works uh, and the other thing is that there are uh, there's also a chance that every time you feed in xp you'll get a proc bonus giving you bonus XP. Uh, so the way it works is back in 4.0, they added the chance for f the feeding process uh, to proc bonus XP. Uh, but in typical XL fashion, they never explained how often that happens and what the minimum or maximum, maximum values of that bonus XP actually are. So to be as accurate as possible, uh, two months ago I sat down and I figured out those rates myself. And that's actually here on YouTube in a video called Arc Age, Aranor Proc Rate, RNG Boxes, and Melisara's Lunastone and Puzzle Box. That video actually covered various things in Arc Age, but the important part of it as it pertains to this discussion is after combining 640 items into Aranor, I actually found the average proc rate, which is 15%. And the average XP bonus is 61% of whatever you're feeding in, into it. I then boiled all that information down, and I found that on average, the Aranor feeding process requires 10% less XP. Now, you can think of that as you get 10% more XP uh, each time uh, for what other stated values are or that the total XP is actually 10% less. The, ten, the, the total XP required to level the Aranor is 10%. Either way, it's the same result, depending, it doesn't matter which way you look at it. Uh, the way that is actually represented in this data is if you look at the very top of these columns up here, uh, in this example, cell D13, you'll see that I have the total XP required to go from arcane to heroic as 7,862. However, in weapon-specific work, I've actually decreased that total by 10%. So that satisfies that chance of getting bonus XP 
wall you feed in item. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, uh, what I want you to know about these quick look boxes is they are mathematically correct, but they not they may not be exact. So you could actually be very unlucky and not get that proc, and that's going to require you to use more weapons, or you could be extremely lucky, and uh, it's going to require less weapons. Also, as you move up in grades, like going from heroic uh, to unique, you can use these quick look boxes to see exactly how much gold you can expect to spend and which weapons are the most cost effective to use. And, of course, it will tell you how many of those weapons you'll need. Now, once you get to the last column, you're likely, uh, that's the column going from Divine to Epic, you're actually not going to be probably using Ethereum any longer. You're going to be using Delphinod or Ionad item. Uh, so p please pay attention to these boxes and use some basic understanding of crafting. So in some cases, feeding in Ethereum weapons might be the most cost effective. But understand that I also did not take labor into these calculations. You may not want to craft 33 Ethereum weapons when you can get the same result with 12 Delphinods. It may actually cost you more, but that is something that you're going to have to consider. Look at the data, figure out what you want to do at each grade. Couple, a couple more things before we move on, and I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, uh, this tab when there's so many more to cover, but this is actually the most important tab and what I did all the other tabs for. Uh, so the things that I want to talk about is Old Obsidian Tier 1 and Jola Shields. And so in the case of the old Obsidian Tier 1, it may not be an option for everybody because uh, a lot of you may not be like me and uh, you didn't stockpile a bunch of these weapons beforehand. Um, just know that if you see them on the auction house and you're considering buying them because of this data, the calculations here are based off the original cost to craft them because, well, I crafted them at that cost. Not the auction house values that you're going to be seeing when you look them up. If you want to consider buying the old uh, Obsidian Tier 1 weapons from the auction house, what you're going to need to do is change their crafting cost values on the weapon cost tab. More on that when we actually get to that tab. Now, as for the Jola Shields, if you are making an Aranor one hand uh, or a shield, you can use the Jola shield as an option. Uh, the Jola shield values, you need to continually monitor them in the auction house and keep the material cost updated uh, with their values. I've got them put in here. Uh, EU, man, you can get these things for 240 gold as of today. Uh, but I suspect once this information gets out, uh, that's likely going to increase. But hey, if you can take advantage of it now, pff, go for it. All right, moving on to the next tab. The next tab is the weapons cost tab. So in this tab, you can see the crafting cost to make any weapon. Well, any weapon that you can make. Uh, from Magnificent to Aranor, as well as the Obsidian Tier 1 cost. You'll also notice that I have a listed Ethereum twice. And that is because you can craft it via normal crafting workbench, or if you have an armorsmith house, you can craft straight to Ethereum. Now you may say, hey, Arid, uh, if I can craft straight to Ethereum at the armorsmith house, why do I care about the normal bench? Well, you're, you're kind of correct there. However, to craft an obsidian, you need to craft a magnificent. And if you have a magnificent, you may not want to... Um, craft an obsidian so you have two options you can go obsidian or you can go ethereum so either way both options are listed the straight to ethereum at an armorsmith house uh, does take a little bit more mats but it still proves to be a little bit cheaper so this tab will tell you how much each weapon costs to craft all you have to do is scroll all the way over to the end of each row section here and uh, starting here in column Q, at the end you'll see highlighted in green the, the cost to craft each weapon. So Ethereum weapons are 460-ish gold uh, for the North American Legacy, which we selected earlier, um, to you know up to 535 gold. It just depends on the weapon type. Uh, Delphinods are around 29, uh, 2,900 gold. Ionads are right around 13,000 gold, and the Aranors, with the cost the way they are right now, around 70,000 gold. 
So use this information to determine what you're willing to pay for items if you're not a crafter. And just remember that when you see these values here, they do not take into fact uh, the labor costs. So remember us crafters, we need to earn money too. All right, before I move on from this tab, I said uh, just a few minutes ago that I would like to discuss the old tier one obsidian stuff. And uh, so we can do that while we're here. So let's nail that down real quick. So here at the bottom is the old uh, the old cost to craft the obsidian tier ones. You'll see it's pretty simple. Eight sunlight crystals, and uh, there's a bunch of trash mob mats that you use, which I don't even put a value on. So all in all, you in the old days, you could craft one of these for around 60 gold. Now, if you want to see how those values stack up versus the current auction house prices, uh, what you can do is just change this cost to whatever you're thinking about paying, and the upgrade cost tab will automatically update. So it's looking at this value here. So I'm just going to do that. So if we plug in a value, and let's say we want to buy these obsidian weapons and they're selling, there's a bunch of them available for 100 gold. So what we do is we plug in 100 gold and then we go back to see if this back to the upgrade cost tab to see if this is still a viable option. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this formula and save it into a new cell so I can put it back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in 100 gold. Now go back to the upgrade cost tab and look at the gold per XP ratio. And still, even paying a hundred gold for these, it looks like in the Arcane to Heroic section here that I've got highlighted, it is still the best option costing us only 96 silver per XP point. And that is still better than the closest option, which is Ethereum at one gold and 25 silver per XP point. Okay, the next tab is the 4.0 regrade cost tab. Now this is the information I put out with the help of Levectra uh, back in a video called Arc Age 4.0 NAEU regrading and gold cost the more you know. I mainly left this here for historical sake. It provided me some insights into how much uh, changes have happened to the regrading gold cost, uh, how much they went down. This data, this data in 4.0 regrade cost tab, it, it isn't used in any calculation. And if you don't want to see it, you can delete the sheet. It's up to you. Uh, so the next tab is the regrade fees in 4.5. And this is the most, most accurate, up-to-date information for regrade fees. You can use this tab to figure out the chance of success and the cost to upgrade most all items all the way up until the epic grade. After which I still have some values there, but unfortunately... I do not have the resources to regrade everything uh, up to Legendary and Mythic, even on the PTS. Uh, I also didn't get any values for the old Obsidian Tier 4 because I simply could not craft them on the PTS any longer. But for this video, those values actually don't matter that much uh, since you can't craft them any longer anyway. And the new Obsidian doesn't appear to be a viable option for feeding Aranor anyway. That is not to say do not feed Obsidian to your Aranor. Uh, if you're like me and you're switching weapons and you have uh, a bound tier 6, uh, you're in a situation where you can either try to regrade it to Legendary and upgrade it to tier 7 because nobody's going to buy a tier 7 Epic or feed it to an Aranor. Uh, what I plan on doing in my case, I'm actually going to be starting to work on an Aranor weapon. And once I get going, and um, I'm at a point where my Aranor weapon is better than my Epic Tier 6, I'm just going to uh, regrade it. If I get lucky, I'll get a Legendary and I can upgrade it, rebind it, and then sell it. If I get really lucky, it may go mythic, and at which point I can upgrade it to tier 7, and then just forget about the Aranor weapon altogether, and go on about my happy little life with a weapon that is basically as good as an Aranor legendary. Alright, just two more tabs to go, so hang in there. Uh, the next tab is called the Regrade Calculations, and in this tab what I'm doing is I decide if you should use a charm, and how much it's going to cost you to regrade up to a specific grade. You will also note that as of 4.5, crafted items actually have a higher 
minimum grade than they did in the past. And that's denoted here in each section. Like in the Delphina, Delphinod section, it says minimum grade is arcane, which basically means is you cannot craft a Delphinod weapon any longer uh, that will come out of any lower grade. So that's where the calculation starts. Uh, you can also use this information to quickly ascertain the value of a weapon at a specific grade. So you can answer questions like, hey, is that Celestial Ionad dagger worth buying? Well, you can. what you can do is you can just do a quick summary like this. Go to the one-handed metal, uh, one metal section here. Type in a blank cell equals sum and select the item and the cost of the regrades up into the point of celestial, uh, which is in column E. And then you sum that all up, and then that will tell you that the crafting and regrading cost of the celestial ionad dagger is about 13k gold. And if you if somebody's trying to sell it to you for cheaper than that, then hey man, it's a good deal. All right, on to the last tab. The last tab is the experience values tab. Uh, this was this was work that was originally published by Omnom. Uh, .io back in 3.5, and I have used this information with their permission. Uh, I also have been double checking the values from the PTS server to confirm any changes that were made in 4.4.5 where I could. Uh, it is also important to note that because regrading and crafting is cheaper and uses less uh, materials, Excel actually reduced the values of Illustrious through Delphinod. Uh, and also all the new obsidians. However, the old obsidian values were left unchanged, which is why they are still very attractive weapons to use in your Aranor if you have them. And before I go, just like last time I released one of these videos about this type of spreadsheet, I want to point out uh, this. Weapons found in dungeons and world bosses, they do have some value. Now, no, I didn't do a calculation for each and every type of weapon. Um, that's simply That would simply take forever, and it isn't something that uh, you're going to have access to in a bulk uh, type of fashion. You can craft as many Ethereums as you want, but you can't get as many Red Dragon weapons as you want. But if you want to figure out a gold value of how much you know, maybe gold you could save by feeding one in. Uh, there's ways to do that. So what you can do is just look for the values of those that we do know. So, for example, let's say you have a Celestial Kraken weapon. And if you look here on this, this sheet, you can see that that is worth 1989 XP. Now, if you pop back over to the Upgrade Cost tab, you'll see that in the going from the Celestial to the Divine Grade, Based on this quick look box, the most optimal weapons to feed the Aranor at this stage is Ethereum with a gold to XP ratio of 1 gold, 55 silver to 1 XP. So what you can do is you can multiply the XP value given by that Kraken weapon by that 1.55 gold. So you just type in here, just find a blank cell and go 1.55 times uh, the XP value, which is 1989, and then you get the value of 3,091 gold. That means that using this weapon at this tier is worth 3,000 gold. That's probably a lot cheaper than what that weapon would sell for on the auction house, but if it's already bound to you, hey man, it's an option. Well, there you have it. It's uh, been eight months since I had to do any work on this stuff. And because of all the changes, it took me a very, very long time to put this stuff together. I've been working on this information since before 4.5 even came out. And then I spent a fair bit of uh, my time on PTS testing and validating all this information. I really wanted to get this out before 4.5 or even on 4.5 launch day, but it just simply wasn't possible. This document alone represents close to another 40 hours of work on data gathering and collation. And that's not to mention all the work that I had done in the previous versions of this spreadsheet and all the work other people have done like Lovectra and Omnom. It's been a long road, but it's finally here and I hope you all find this helpful.
Well, that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you have found this information both helpful and informative. That is the goal of each video. Special credits to Al Hassan Muhammad, Facebook Vibe Skies, and YouTube Al Hassan Muhammad for the intro and this outro music. This video was edited by Arid. You can find me on Twitch TV, Arid underscore, as well as YouTube channel, Arid. Uh, if you'd like to support me, you can follow me on Patreon, Twitch, as well as if you would like a one-time donation, you can do that via Streamlabs. I'd also like to thank my current Patreons, Umukon Onal and Billy Cool, as well as all these Twitch subs that are listed here. Thank you very much. And then the one-time top donors, Riot Devil, Mac PPS, Ascendra, Eldern, and Wick and Vape. You guys are all awesome. Thank you very much for the support. And as promised, I will recognize you in each and every one of my videos. So if you'd like to support me, please do so. Until next time, this is September saying, be well.